January 1st is readiness. Uh, that's my number one priority, and, and I've said repeatedly there is no other number one. We have an obligation to ensure that all of our units, our soldiers, our leaders are all uh, ready for uh, the potential contingencies that are out there and also ready for the current fight in both Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, we've got soldiers in harm's way today, and so readiness is number one, and in my book, there is no other number one. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, challenges uh, ahead of us. Uh, there's a lot of uh, unst instability uh, in the international world right now. Uh, we've got instability in the Middle East. Uh, you see it play out in Iraq and Syria on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we still have an unstable situation in Afghanistan. Uh, so you've got ISIS uh, roaming uh, the deserts of the Middle East. Uh, so that's a big challenge. Uh, we've got challenges in Eastern Europe uh, with Russia and the Ukraine and so on. Uh, there's still challenges uh, with respect to uh, Korea and the Korean Peninsula. So that's where the readiness comes in. We have to be ready for uh, uh, multiple different types of contingencies and different types of terrains against all kinds of different enemies. And I think that's a significant challenge. Then there's challenges uh, here with the force. Uh, we've got some budget constraints that we're operating under. We've got to take a look at how we're going to downsize the force over the next couple of years. We've already announced that we're going to go to uh, 450,000 in the, in the uh, active duty force of the uh, total army. Uh, and how we manage that drawdown is going to be a significant challenge in the couple of years ahead uh, to get to that number. Well, the Screaming Eagles are uh, not only a great division with a tremendous historical record, uh, but frankly, they're also the most powerful division in the United States Army uh, because they can move, shoot, and communicate on a battlefield like no other division that we have. They've got tremendous capabilities in the Combat Aviation Brigade, and they've got exceptionally well-trained and highly skilled infantry in the three infantry brigades. So it's a, it's a great division. It's got tremendous tactical reach. It's got tremendous tactical mobility. It's got a lot of firepower in it. Uh, it's just an all-around uh, tremendous division uh, with tremendous combat uh, capability in it. So the 101st is unique in that respect. But also Campbell brings some other skills uh, uh, to the fight. Uh, you've got 5th Special Forces Group. <clears throat> you've got elements of Task Force 160 here. So you've got a big special operations component. Uh, and then there's Guard and Reserve that come in here and train as part of the total army uh, that routinely uh, come here to Fort Campbell to train and get their skill sets up. So Campbell represents sort of a full Monty package for the total army. It's got special operations, conventional forces, a lot of rotary wing aviation, and then, of course, you've got the Guard and Reserve that all participate in the training here. So it's a unique place. It's an incredibly valuable asset to the United States Army.